They say they're not doing critical race theory in school. Every publication nationwide, major news channels, teachers, school boards, they'll tell you, but we're not teaching critical race theory. There is no critical race theory. You're delusional. You're paranoid. You're a conspiracy theorist. Well, welcome to Deb's Magical Mystery Tour of Critical Race Theory in Schools. Today I'm going to take you on a little tour through my Twitter bookmarks. This is just from the last couple of days, but I think you'll see that what you're being told is not true. Now before I get into this, I have two things I want to say. First, they are not teaching about critical race theory in your schools. That is true. They're not teaching about it. They're not teaching it the way they might teach it in college or in law school. They're not teaching it as a theory of how to understand the world and so forth. They're not looking at it like, hey, here's some stuff that, you know, you could think about as far as what makes the world tick. What they're doing in our K-12 classrooms and even in our college and university classrooms is they're teaching within critical race theory. They're teaching from it. There's a difference between theory and praxis, okay? Putting it into action. That gets done very simply by just being in the mindset. In the mindset. That would be like me saying, I'm not teaching individualism. I'm not teaching individualism in the classroom. No, where is it? Where do you see me teaching individualism in the classroom? But then I would teach a lesson and center all kinds of individualists and center people who have espoused views that are individualistic, and I would maybe, you know, assign some Ayn Rand and things like that. And would you say that I was teaching in individualism or from a worldview that centers individualism? I think you would. I think you would. You'd be right. Yeah. But that's what they're doing. So with that in mind, okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is just to make a pitch for the channel, of course. Got to throw it in there right at the beginning before I show you the good stuff. Would you please consider subscribing to the channel, liking, commenting, sharing these videos? I have a whole playlist called Stop CRT. If you're interested in this, if you know people who are, share it with them. And if you are really interested in these topics and want to go into more depth or get specific advice for yourself on how to make decisions about next year for your kid, come join my locals community. Okay, moving on. So here we have from Local Distance, Joanne Reed says critical race theory is not being taught in a single K-12 school. Meanwhile, a teacher on TikTok explains why he uses CRT in the classroom because CRT really is becoming common in education. He's right about that. So critical race theory in K-12 education, a thread. Wasn't nice of him to create a thread for me so I don't have to go all over Twitter to find them for you. I thought so. And just in case you're not on Twitter, I'm going to bring it all to you right here with my commentary, of course. So let's take a look at this. So this comment right here is asking me to explain um, why not wanting critical race theory in the classroom is racist. Thank you for asking me this question. I'd love to explain it. So critical race theory talks about how the systems that we have, the laws that we have, um, how all of those are designed to oppress people groups. Are they? Do tell. How are they? How do you know they are designed to oppress people groups? What's a people group? Things like mass incarceration. Mass incarceration. Is there non-mass incarceration? Do we like imprison people individually in their homes? I mean, for some crimes, maybe we do with a little ankle bracelet, but mass incarceration. He makes it sound like we're just rounding people up randomly and stuffing them in prison. The prison industrial system. The, the prison industrial system. What is that, dude? Military industrial system. All of those are used to oppress people groups. They're all used to oppress people groups. Are you suggesting we shouldn't have a military? I mean, I grant you that the military industrial complex is a little sketch, and I'm not really that fond of all the wars that we get involved in for no apparent good reason, but designed to oppress, I, I don't know. We do a lot of misguided things that I don't approve of, but I think designed to oppress is a bit much. It's By teaching this in the classroom, we can show our kids wait, wait, what wait, wait, systems. Wait, 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 wait. Did he say by teaching this in the classroom? So that means he's teaching students that we mass incarcerate people intentionally to oppress them. We have a military intentionally to oppress people. And then all the laws we have 
aside from those, I guess all the other laws that he's spent copious free time reading and understanding, even though he doesn't have a law degree, most likely, they're all designed to oppress. And he's teaching this in the classroom. Need to be challenged and thought about differently. They need to be challenged and thought about differently, says the man who's a school teacher, not a lawyer, not a member of the military, not a, you know, a social scientist, not an economist, not anybody, you know, and I'm not one to appeal to authority, but these little kids and you, are you going to think about all these things differently? In what context? How well are your kids reading? How much do they know about these topics? Do they really know the history of how these things came to be and why they came to be? Are you giving them any alternative information about other possible reasons we have a military? There might be like a few reasons. Or what about other reasons we might have prisons? I don't know. I, it's, it's a mystery, really. Racism isn't going to be fixed by me going down to a kid right here and saying, hey, buddy, you really need to be nicer to that kid over there, even though they look a little bit different than you. Dude, when was the last time you even had the thought process that you needed to do that? Or any of this. Racism isn't going to be fixed, period. I got news for you. Racism isn't going to be fixed. It's not fixable because racism is like a personality defect. If you literally treat people differently or you contrive systems of oppression to oppress other people, you know, kind of like your ideology does, the people who subscribe to it, you're literally coming up with ways that you can oppress people you don't like. You are. You don't realize that you are, but you are. Anyway, but no, you can't fix that. You can't fix the impulse to oppress or control. What you can do is have everybody be equal under the law with the law protecting people's individual rights. And then when somebody does try to oppress you with their really crappy ideas, you can push back legally. Yeah, you can do that. It's called self-defense. We can dismantle racism by dismantling systems of oppression. Oh, we can, can we? We can. And how would we do that without massive use of force? We dismantle systems. What about the people who don't want to dismantle them? Because there'll be a lot of people who don't want to dismantle them. Mm -hmm. We think that they're, you know, they were created for other purposes and we maybe need them. They're not going to just let you unlock the door of the prison and let everybody out. And they're not going to disband the military. So how are you going to dismantle these systems of oppression such that you're going to have everybody go along with it voluntarily? Like no oppression to get rid of the oppression. I'm, I, I await your answer. Not by being nice to people. Uh, no, definitely not by being nice to people. We're not going to do it by being nice to people. What you've literally just admitted is we got to oppress some people to dismantle the oppression. Yeah, good talk. All right, moving on. We have, um, what the heck? Okay, I'm not even going to, into Whoopi Goldberg. But here, like Joy and Reed, many claim CRT is not taught in K-12, picture one. But that just isn't true. There are many textbooks written about CRT in K-12 education, pictures two and three. The fact is that for quite some time, critical race theory has been making its way into education. Oh, that is so very true. Let's take a look. Um, so here's all the images saying, who's talking about, what, where, who? It's only taught in law schools and universities. CRT isn't even taught in public K-12 till Theory is offered in college only and unengaged traits. No, it's so not taught in grade school and it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be. Right. Okay. Let's see, shall we? Critical race theory in education, a scholar's journey. Critical race theory matters, education and ideology. Critical race theory in education, new developments in critical race theory and education. Critical race theory, critical race theory in education, critical race theory in mathematics education. <gasps> and there's more. Critical race theory in mathematics, critical race theory in teacher education, foundations of critical race theory in education, second edition. Critical race theory in education, critical race theory in higher education, 20 years of theoretical research and innovations. Wow, that's a whole lot of nothing. For example, in the Fort Worth Independent School District, they say they want administrators and teachers to know and understand CRT and be able to apply it in their current roles. Hmm, let's see, teachers. I'm pretty sure they go in the classroom. So the question is, how did this happen and why are people denying it? Let's take a look. Overview of services provided by the Division of Equity and Excellence, a working understanding of critical race theory and its central tenets. Counter storytelling, the permanence of racism. The permanence of right Now, I just said it's race. It's permanent, right? Yes, it's permanent, which is why we have better things to do in schools where kids don't read than harp on something that we cannot change, meaning we can't get rid of all of it forever and always. It lives in the minds of people with bad ideas. What we can do is teach better ideas and help individuals aspire to go on and build their lives and be decent and observe the tenets in the constitution of treating everybody equally and actually, in, you know, enforcing that law. And then anybody who steps up to the plate to behave in a racist way will simply be punished because that's not legal. That's not allowed. Maybe in your private life, it might be allowed, but 
so walk away or leave those people and go on with your bad self towards the millions and millions of other people who are not racist. Whiteness as property. Wow. Okay, so now we're bringing that in. Interest convergence critique of liberalism. Did you hear that? Critique of liberalism. Next time somebody tells you they're a liberal and they believe in CRT or they agree with CRT, you need to remind them they're not a liberal. Uh, the ability to easily and openly discuss issues of race, racism, and settler colonialism. I can easily and openly discuss those issues with you. You just won't like what you hear. The ability to read, understand, and apply CRT as an analysis tool in their current roles. Okay, so that's what they want participants, all participants in this to do. These are the learning objectives. It's a self-paced course. You'll learn how racism is prevalent in all aspects of our society. This is CRT. This is literally CRT. Historical perspectives of race in Fort Worth, etc. Okay, they want all of their teachers to be taught that. Okay, now if it's in the mind of the teacher, do you think you can get it out? You think you can ban it? You think you can get out of the class, like it's never going to walk into the classroom and teach something from a critical theory point of view from that worldview? Mm, I don't think so. How CRT got into education starts with two men, Henry Giroux and Paula Freire. According to Isaac Gottesman, Freire was a Marxist education theorist who was heavily influenced by the critical Marxist tradition who worked with Giroux to publish radical education scholarship. Let's take a look, shall we? Hmm. He became thoroughly engrossed in Marxist revolutionary thought. Freire was influenced by the work of classical revolutionary thinkers such as V.I. Lenin. Like many of his contemporaries, in addition to the revolutionary Marxist tradition, Freire also became deeply influenced by the critical Marxist tradition. Antonio Gramsci in the late 1920s and early 1930s, and from 1920s on, Max Horkheimer, Theodore Adorno, Wal Walter Benjamin, Eric Fromm, Herbert Marcuse, and others affiliated with the Institute of Social Research, commonly referred to as the Frankfurt School. Ever hear that term? Yeah, you should know it. It was Max Horkheimer who became director of the Institute in 1930, who in 1937 essay titled Traditional and Critical Theory coined the term critical theory. Enter Henry Giroux, who was first deeply inspired by Freire when he read Pedagogy of the Oppressed as a high school teacher in the mid-1970s. Giroux, 19, 2008. Let's see. This led Freire to uh, this led to Freire increasing his visits to the states and widening his networks with scholars in the field. Giroux and Freire also began co-editing the book series *Critical Studies in Education* for Bergen and Garvey, which became a central publisher of critical educational scholarship for over two decades and taught in graduate schools around this country to future teachers and future teacher educators. How does it get into the schools, Deb? That's how. The type of education scholarship that may that may that came to be known as critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy, all teaching in every place and in every circumstance is always political activity and therefore teaching should be thought of as inherently political. I was taught, I, little old, and I mean old with a capital O, me was taught in 1989 at University of Pennsylvania that teaching is a political act. That wasn't just under the Trump administration. So it's not like this brand new thing. Okay, so there it is. Critical pedagogy It is a primer and here we are, is constructed on the belief that education is inherently political, whether one is teaching in Bangladesh or Bensonhurst, Sen Senegal or Shreveport, East Timor and West New York, education is a political activity. Is that what you think, parents? Do you, do you think that? Okay. I don't think you do, probably. As such, they thought teaching and teacher education should become more political. More political. So which politics are they bringing into education? Well, they answer by saying neo-Marxism is the best approach for developing education. These are their words, not mine. Aronowitz and Giroux's Education Under Siege was dedicated to Paulo Freire, who is a living embodiment of the principle that underlies his work, that pedagogy should become more political and the political should become more pedagogical. And the neo-Marxist position, it seems to us, provides the most insightful and comprehensive model for a more progressive approach for understanding the nature of schooling and developing an emancipatory program for social education. That's a long-winded, fancy way of saying, we're going to get the Marxism into the country through the little kids. Finally, Drew ends up bringing postmodernism into critical pedagogy in order to give himself the tools with which to challenge the Enlightenment model of education, which includes concepts such as absolute truth and objectivity. Critical theory and postmodernism rejects a notion of reason that is disinterested, transcendent, and universal. Stop. Postmodernism rejects a notion of reason that is disinterested, transcendent, and universal. You know the things that made this country possible? The values we supposedly hold dear? The values contained in the document every politician you elected swears to uphold, preserve, protect, and defend. 
And yet they are running on platforms to support teachers unions and educators who are pushing this into the classroom. They are soft little quiet traders. They are no less than insurrectionists. So just because they don't show up at the Capitol building, break a couple windows or waltz in when someone opens the door with a flag and a little buffalo horn hat does not make them any less revolutionary. In fact, it makes them more revolutionary because they have an ideology. Those yahoos showed up for showing up sick, okay? These people have an ideology that they would like to completely replace America as we know it and our constitution as we know it with a Marxian model, whatever that might look like. Okay, so is that is that what you signed up for? Is that what you want your kids to be, little Marxist revolutionaries? I didn't think so. Postmodernism suggests that what has been presented in our social, political, and intellectual traditions as knowledge, truth, objectivity, and reason are actually merely the effects of a political form of social power. They're not real. Just, you know, it's, don't believe your lying eyes and ears. That's not, it's not real. That's a little thing we like to call gaslighting. So I really want you guys to internalize that because that's – why you need to not have your kids in the public school, really above and beyond all the other things. It's, your kids are going to be turned into Marxist revolutionaries. Uh, let's see. So he says here, postmodernism, that's are used in critical race theory. As Kimberly Crenshaw states here, postmodernism and Marxism are used by CRT. And in the video here, she says critical race theory was founded when they realized they were critical theorists looking at race. So they were taking all of these ideas, you know, objectivity, reason, all that stuff. Yeah, it's not liberating enough. It's not liberating enough. They want liberation now. They don't see liberation in reason and logic and universal values. It's not fast enough. They're not going to get the stuff away from the people who have it quickly enough because you have that pesky equality under the law thing. You can't just take things because you want them or you feel like you need them because somebody else has them and you don't and you've decided that's unfair and it's due to some past oppression by people who look like those other people. And I want it now. Gosh, none of these methods was unique to our work, but their frequent use by scholars of color as part of a race-centered enterprise indicated the emergence of a genre or movement. It was this 1980s generation of liberation scholarship that came to be known as critical race theory, right? We turned to new approaches borrowing from and critiquing our intellectual traditions. They critiqued liberalism, yeah, guys. They're not liberals. So please don't ever call them liberals. They're not. Now, it's not so simple as to say CRT and critical, critical pedagogy both make use of postmodernism and critical theory, so they are the same. There's one more little wrinkle here. CRT and critical pedagogy are both branches of the tree of critical social justice. In other words, they're both branches of wokeness. CRT is the woke academic way of theorizing about race. Critical pedagogy is the woke academic way of theorizing about education. And that means critical pedagogy is the teaching method woke teachers use to bring CRT into the classroom. Critical pedagogy provides the intellectual foundation woke teachers use to bring wokeness into the classroom and to justify bringing wokeness into the classroom. So that's how they, how they do it and how they justify doing it. Isn't that convenient? All while telling you they're not doing it. So critical pedagogy provides theories about why teachers should use their classroom to teach critical social justice. It's the only way we can truly liberate the children. It's the only way to overcome injustice of the past. It's the only way we can help them achieve. It's the only way to achieve equity. And it provides theories about how racism is permanent. All whites are racist and whiteness is property. And CRT is inculcated using critical pedagogy. So the teachers are taught using critical pedagogy because part of their being, you saw that guy, he doesn't even, he's not even questioning any of it. It's like all true. It's the truth. There's no other way to do it, you guys. Doesn't hear the inherent contradiction. Doesn't understand that he's literally preaching oppression. He's preaching coercion. Doesn't even get it. It's like, poof, right over his head. Now he's going to go into the classroom and it's essential for him to do this work because justification, my work is political. It has to be by definition. There's no other way to look at it. The student has no right to define his own education as having a different meaning for himself. No, 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 of course not. It's what the teacher wants it to be because liberation. So there are various wings or branches of wokeness. CRT is the race branch. Women's studies is the women's branch. Queer theory is the gender branch. Critical pedagogy is the education branch. Disability studies is the disability branch. None of these is fully independent. They all go together. Intersectionality, gender theory, all of it. It all works together, you guys. 
Each has its place within the critical social justice project and each specializes in theorizing its own idea on the terms of the worldview of critical social justice. They work independently and sometimes they even fight, but they're all committed to some form of critical social justice. Why the word critical, you might ask? Because you have to critique, you have to tear down, you have to pull apart, dismantle all of these words. When they say critical, they mean it literally. They mean it literally. They also are implying that it's crisis time. It's critical. We must do this now. It's essential. There's no, there's no time for discussion. We need to talk about the nuances. No, it's critical. Okay, so it means both those things in their minds. So while we're pushing back against CRT and that work is important and good, we must make sure we do not miss the big picture of wokeness as a whole or forget the damage being done by the other woke disi disciplines in other areas, gender in particular. We need to find a balance that allows us to focus not just on individual parts of wokeness, but on the entire worldview so we can say no to illiberalism across the board. Well, I completely agree. So thank you, Woke Distance. Really what you basically need to know about all of this is that these people are going around you, the parents, around any school boards that might not want this, around even a certain superintendent of public instruction in the state of North Carolina, who may or may not know that this is happening even here in her state. Um, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I might do a video about that. I might not. I haven't decided yet. But, you know, it gets in. It gets squeaked in all kinds of different ways because it happens at the, at the district level, guys. It doesn't happen way up at the state level. We're burning CRT. That's awesome. Fantastic. You're doing that. But guess what? That's not how it's getting in. It's getting in by the teachers. Here's an example of that high school teacher in Colorado openly admitting he uses critical race theory in everything he teaches and will ignore any law that restricts his ability to indoctrinate students. He needs to be relieved of the position he's blatantly abusing. That's James Lindsay. I couldn't agree more. So you probably should follow your students' teachers on their social media if you really want to know what's going on. I'm going on record now. At the end of the day, it's just my students and me in our classroom. And we will be discussing race, class, and gender in my history classes, regardless of what laws and policies people want to pass. Critical race theory is a component of everything I do. Common ground doesn't mean meeting in the middle. The only common ground that exists is what exists in leftist beliefs. Because conservative common ground leaves out people who are poor, BIPOC, queer, with disability, etc. But our common ground includes the liberation for all. And we do so ground up. Take over school boards, city councils, county commissioners, etc. Wow. I hope you guys get the point. When they tell you we're not teaching critical race theory, uh, well, first of all, they're lying or at least ignorant, which is pretty much inexcusable at this point. And they're not teaching about it. They're not teaching about it. They're teaching, as the first mullet guy said, they're teaching in it. It's everything they do. It's who they are. It's how they see the world. It's how they've been brainwashed themselves. They've been indoctrinated in their teachers' school, colleges and in their universities. And now they're coming on down to the classroom believing that they are political activists trying to recruit more revolutionaries for the cause of liberation of all people from the evil, awful oppression of the Constitution of the United States and equal rights for all. It's terribly oppressive, isn't it? Yeah. So... That's the video for today. Again, I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. Like, share, comment. That's the video.